Our presenter, our presenter, UAB archivist, Kim Pennycuff, has decades of experience preserving and documenting the UAB history. He has extensively researched African Americans, African Americans contributions to UAB and Birmingham as a as a whole through several projects, including his book, 50 Years of Dreams and Discoveries, which I, I want to get a copy of that, at the University of Alabama of Birmingham. Please join me in welcoming Tim Pennycuff. And Tim, welcome tonight. All right, thank you. All right. All right, Meredith, have you given me? I have made you the host, so you should be good. Okay, give me just a second. Now something, I've gone, it's gone away on me. <laughs> I've lost the tab. Okay, sorry. Now, are you seeing the PowerPoint? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for the uh, invitation and the chance to speak with you briefly on the on the for part of Black History Month. And we've got a lot to cover and I want to go ahead and um, get started. But before we do, I do want to remind everyone that a lot of the information in the PowerPoint will be available on our website uh, for the UAB archives. If you don't have something to write this down, just do a web search for the UAB archives will come up. And I always point out, if my cursor is working here, the image of the month feature, we change this out each month. And um, this was from January uh, with students building a snowman over on the, at the mini park. But uh, do, do check out our website at some point if you haven't already seen it. Um, just a brief overview of the history of the School of Medicine. As many of you uh, know, the medical school was started in 1859 in Mobile. It was a proprietary school. Uh, it was open for profit from the members of the faculty. And it was not associated with uh, any university. It was a completely separate institution. It operated for a couple of years, and when the Civil War started, the school was closed. Uh, most of the students went off to join the war effort, and several of the faculty members did. And um, in 1868, the school reopened, still as a proprietary school in Mobile. Uh, and in 1907, the Alabama legislature amended the charter of the school and placed it completely under the University of Alabama. They had attempted to do it earlier in the 1890s, but, um, but the, the school in Mobile kept its own board and there, there were lots of issues with that. But in 1907, the school became part of the University of Alabama and it operated in Mobile until 1920. Uh, at which point it, the four-year school was closed. It was moved to Tuscaloosa where it reopened as a two-year basic sciences program only. So uh, the state of Alabama had no four-year medical school for those 25 years that it was in Tuscaloosa. In 1945, uh, the legislature, uh, well, actually 1944, the legislature passed a bill creating a four-year school, and it was determined that that school would be placed in Birmingham. So the, the school was moved up here in 1945 and has been here ever since. And in 1969, the campus in Birmingham became a UAB, an independent separate uh, member of the University of Alabama system, one of the three campuses that were created in 1969. So that's just a brief overview to remind you. And I did want to show the facilities in Mobile. Uh, the building there was the medical school and it served as the medical school for the whole time that uh, the program was in Mobile. Uh, the Tuscaloosa campus uh, was uh, housed 
in a knot hall in Tuscaloosa. And um, there was some use of Druid City Hospital, which is uh, pictured there in, at the bottom. And then in 1945, it was moved to Birmingham to Southside into the existing Jefferson and Hillman hospitals. And there is where uh, our medical school uh, center here in Birmingham started in those two buildings. And just to give you an idea of what the campus looked like during the, during the 1960s and the civil rights movement, here's an aerial looking west toward the hospital. I'm gonna move my cursor here and hopefully you can see it. Here's Jefferson Tower, Lyons Harrison, the VA hospital. And this is what we now know of as University Boulevard. And I am seated about right here where this tree is located. It doesn't look any different. I don't know what. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a, just a few changes. All right, so here in Birmingham, like, uh, like the campus in Tuscaloosa, uh, the, everything was segregated by race. Uh, if you can make out in this picture, this is a patient in the hospital being wheeled past a sign that says white waiting room. Um, so the hospital and all clinical facilities treated both white and black patients, but in areas that were segregated by race. Here is another image from the hospital. Uh, this image of an African-American obstetrics ward, you, which you can see there on the door, is probably one of our most used images in our collection. Uh, it was used a few years ago. Uh, the National Library of Medicine in Washington did a, a, a well, it's originally an in-house and they turned it into a traveling exhibit on uh, the education of African American physicians. And this picture was used in that exhibit and is still on their website, or it, it was a, a year or so ago. And as a result, it has been used in publications and documentaries and TV shows. We even had a few years ago a French language documentary in Canada uh, licensed the image for use in one of their productions. Uh, here is the resident assignment sheet for that first fall term that everything here was part of the University of Alabama. And you can see there that the wards were divided by both uh, private uh, pay, i.e. patients who could afford to pay for their treatment and by charity cases. And then within those designations, uh, there were also wards and areas divided by race. but treatment occurred in the hospital. Uh, Hillman and Jefferson had both existed before the medical center was moved here. They had been independent originally and then had been county operated. And throughout the, it, the whole history of both hospitals, uh, the facilities treated white and black patients. But as up to this point in the history of the medical school, there had been no African-American students, no faculty members, no administrators, no professional staff. Um, and that changed in the 1960s, as we all know, in a sort of a gradual process that began really in 1963. Um, if I went through the whole history of the integration of the campus, that would be an hour long presentation in and of itself. And there's a lot to talk about, uh, but these are some of the highlights in our timeline with um, some of you will remember the infamous stand in the schoolhouse door in Tuscaloosa with Governor Wallace. Uh, that was in the summer of 1963. And after that event, the first two students uh, uh, enrolled in Tuscaloosa and became the first two permanent st African-American students uh, in the University of Alabama system. The first student here uh, enrolled in the fall of 63. He was a graduate student in education. And since he was working full time, he actually delayed his matriculation until January. Um, 
by the fall of uh, 64, the first African-American student in the medical center was enrolled. She enrolled in the med tech course, which was then operated through University Hospital, but would now be one of the programs uh, at the School of Health Professions. Um, in April of 65, and I'll show you this in, the, in a moment, University Hospital became the last part of the Birmingham campus that was fully integrated. And in May of 1965, the US Department of Health, Education and Welfare did a um, report uh, that uh, certified that the Birmingham campus was in full compliance with the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And it was the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and other court rulings and other legislative actions that uh, allowed the integration of our campus here in Birmingham. So the Civil Rights Act was signed in July of 64, and most of the provisions of that became effective as of January. And these are some of the, the publications that were sent out to hospitals and facilities all across the country. And these are a couple that were sent here to UAB, which outlined what facilities had to do to be in compliance with the new Civil Rights Act. And this memo from the administrator of uh, University Hospital, Matt McNulty, to Dr. Volker, who was our Vice President for Health Affairs at the time, notes that he had reviewed the uh, booklet, uh, A Guide to Community Action under Title VI, and that if it should be recorded, it is here reported that the University of Alabama Hospital is 100% non-segregated. So that is the date that I give as the actual last day, or the first day that University Hospital and the uh, entire Birmingham campus was fully integrated, April of 1965. All right, so with all of that as the background, uh, Meredith asked if I could talk about some trailblazers. So I have a few to mention. Now, I will tell you before I even start, we don't have time to talk about every trailblazer for every department or every unit. Uh, these are some highlights uh, in our talk this evening. But Dr. James Montgomery, a local physician here in Birmingham, uh, became the first member, the first African American member of the School of Medicine faculty in 1964. He was given a clinical appointment, um, and he was the first African American member of the Jefferson County Medical Society. Because prior to that, the medical society was restricted to white physicians, uh, like everything else in the South. Uh, but Dr. Montgomery was on the faculty for a long time. In the 1970s, he was a member of the admissions committee for the medical school. Um, the person that I think is the first African-American female with a, an appointment in uh, the medical center was Dr. Bernetta Scott. Uh, she was in the Joint Health Sciences. She had a secondary appointment in anatomy, and her primary appointment was in the School of Dentistry. And she came here in uh, 1966 and um, was here for a few years. Dr. Herschel Hamilton, another uh, local physician, uh, got a, received a clinical appointment in surgery in 1968. And he was the first board certified African American general surgeon in University Hospital. And um, there's a scholarship uh, in Dr. Hamilton's name at the medical school now. Dr. Sandra Lewis uh, was an early, I honestly do not know who the first African American female. Uh, on the full-time faculty, but Dr. Um, Lewis received her appointment in 1980 in anesthesiology, 
but I do know at the year that she received her appointment, there were 57 female faculty members at the medical school, uh, which this brings up a good point. It's kind of hard to look back at uh, trying to figure out what we want now when you look back in the records because they didn't necessarily have to record uh, national origin or race or uh, those issues in some of the early days especially. Uh, I do think fairly strongly that Dr. Lewis was the first divisional director in the medical school. Uh, she became director of one of the anesthesia divisions in 1989. Dr. Scott, many of you will know Dr. Johnny Scott, was here for a long time on our faculty. And in 1999, he became a member of the administration for the School of Medicine when he was named Assistant Dean of Minority Medical Education. Uh, and uh, that's a a jovial photo of Dr. Scott. Uh, also the first African-American with a full-time appointment as chair of a department uh, was Dr. Tony Jones. He became chair of anesthesiology in 2006. And then of course, uh, later became president of the Health Services Foundation. So some house staff trailblazers. Uh, Carolyn Ivory began a residency program in pediatrics in 1972. And as far as I have been able to determine, she is the first African-American in a residency program at UAB. And I only know this because the year that she be, uh, began, began her program, 1972, the residents and the interns are listed in the, school, the old School of Medicine catalogs, the bulletins. And the year that she began, they began to list the school where the resident or the intern had received their degree. And when I saw that it said Meharry, I was like, oh, wait, this is important. Uh, prior to that, the uh, programs were not listed so I can't say 100% that there wasn't someone in the 68, 69, 70 period, but she is the earliest that I have been able to identify. And I will say that I had to find this photo of Dr. Ivory on a year, the yearbook.com. Uh, it was very odd how I found it, but this is from her uh, college yearbook at Berea College in Kentucky. Dr. Ransom, many of you will remember Dr. Ransom from the emergency department. Uh, he began an internship in 72 and became a resident in 73. Uh, again, I think he is one of the first uh, intern. And Dr. Dukes, Carl Dukes, was the first African-American named as the chief medical resident at UAB, and he finished his residency in 1979. So a couple of students, we have to, we have to bring in our students. So our first two African-American students are pictured here, Richard Dale and Sam Sullivan. They both began in the fall of 66 and graduated in June of 1970. Uh, but somewhat unusual for their graduation was they actually got press for being the first two graduates. This was not something that was done often, which makes it hard to look back in the past and figure out some of those first. But this is an article from the Birmingham Post-Herald talking about their upcoming graduation. The first African-American female student and graduate, Patience Hodges Claibon, pictured here. And before you say, hey, you've got a mistake there, she did matriculate in December. She did complete her degree in December, and it was in three years. This was a period in time where they had an accelerated year-round three-year program. Uh, so um, those are correct. <laughs> 
Oh, and then the first African American member of Alpha Omega Alpha, Mutoka Mutanga, class of 1995. And I know we're running short on time, but I did want to mention a couple of alumni, alumni trailblazers. There's so many. And obviously there's many, there are many that I don't know who they are or what they have done, but I did want to point out a couple. Dr. Uh, Regina Benjamin, class of 1984 and a 2001 honorary degree recipient from UAB. Um, in 2002, she became the first African-American as president of the Medical Association of the State of Alabama. At that appointment, she became the first African-American female anywhere in the US to lead her state medical society. And of course, uh, in 2009, President Obama selected Dr. Benjamin as Surgeon General of the US. And here she is at the bottom with, uh, unfortunately his face is turned away, but that's uh, Dr. Pittman, speaking with Dr. Benjamin and Dr. Max Michael from the School of Public Health at her um, honorary degree uh, ceremony. Uh, Dr. Bugs, class of 1980, the first African-American to serve as president of the Medical Alumni Association. And a couple of recent achievements for the medical school. Um, Dr. Vickers, as we all know, became Dean and Senior Vice President in 2003. Um, Dr. Ely in 2021, she became Chair of the Department of Emergency Medicine, the first African-American female in the country to be named as Chair of an uh, ER, uh, Emergency Department. Uh, and then of course, our current Medical Alumni Association President, Dr. Bivens. And then just last month, uh, Dr. Vickers became CEO of the health system. And I will remind everyone that he was on the faculty here before. Uh, he was on the, a member of the surgery faculty from 1994 to 2006 uh, before he went off to um, Minnesota and uh, then returned as uh, Dean and Senior Vice President. And just a couple of UAB wide recent uh, achievements. In 2016, UAB became the first institution in the state to be awarded a Higher Education Excellence in Diversity Award. And that was followed up. Uh, the award has now been presented to UAB five times. Ooh, that's my time reminder. Um, in 2019, uh, UAB was awarded uh, the College and Institutions Committed to Diversity Award by Minority Access. And just last year, UAB was named the number four best employer for diversity by Forbes. Now that's not the number four medical school or the number four university, that's the number four employer in the country. This includes banks, uh, institutions, corporate. Um, so quite a, an accolade there for UAB. I know that that was brief. There was a lot in that. Uh, I think we would have time for some questions. Yes. 